Hi everyone, welcome to VizWiz. We are finally at the point where we can start plotting this data using ggplot. So let's work out where we're up to. We have read in the data, um, looked at what the beach bugs data includes, tidied up the columns, learned how to sort and filter things, learned how to group by and summarize, learned how to add new variables, and today we're going to move on to visualization. So first what I want you to do is open up the basics script that we've been working on so far and run the whole thing by pressing on the source button so that you pull all of these data frames that you've created into your environment. And what I want you to do is export um, a new CSV of this data frame that we created at the end of Clean It Up 3. So we want to create a new CSV that has our cleaned data that we can pull back into R when we want to do visualization so that we don't have to run this cleaning script. Um, we can separate our cleaning process from our plotting process. So what we're going to do is use the function write, let's um, add a note for ourselves, so write cleaned data to CSV. <clears throat> so we're going to use the function write CSV. And you can see that write CSV expects us to tell it what data frame we want it to write. So we want the one that we just created that's called Clean Beaches New. And then it's expecting a path. So the nice thing here, now that we know how to use the here package, we can use here to specify the path that we write data to, as well as the path that we read data from. So if you use here, and then we know that here is always relative to the top level of our project file. So we can say that we want it to write this data to the folder that's called data, the same one that we read the data from originally. Um, and then we want it to write to a file that's called clean beaches new dot csv. All right. So if we run that line of code, either by pressing the run button up here, or if you're using a Mac, using command and enter, um, what we should find is that when we look over here in our data folder, there is a new file, there it goes, called clean beaches new. And this is the data that we're going to read into R to do all our plotting with. Right. So what you can do is save your basics um, script and let's create a new one that's for plotting. So we'll go file, new file, R script, and we'll save it. Um, let's put it in. Our scripts folder and we'll call it this was. All right, so just like we did originally, actually the safest thing to do at this point is to clean out our environment, right? So those are all the things that we created when we were exploring and cleaning. We don't need those anymore because what we're going to do is read in the fresh clean data, right? So to do that, we need to um, load packages. So we're going to include library tidyverse. So when you load library tidyverse, you automatically get ggplot2 because it's a core tidyverse package. We're going to need here as well. And actually what I want you to do at this point, because that'll come in handy, is to install a package that is called ggbswarm. 
UV Boost Form is one of my favorite um, packages for plotting raw data. Right. Whoops. Might be start as going to come back to where we were. Okay, that's okay. So we'll, while we're here, load the package GG Beast Form. All right. We are still thinking. Oh no, there we go. It's okay. Checking a little bit. And keep making notes to ourselves. Read in clean features new data. So to do that, we want to go um we'll call this plot features. Oops, bad typing. Plot features. And we're gonna use read underscore CSV. We're going to tell it that we want it to look here and to look in our data folder or a file that's called clean features new CSV. All right, let's load that in. Okay, so now we have this new data frame that's called plot features that has all of the variables that were in our original beaches file plus the date that remember how we separated that into day, month and year, beach bug levels as well as all the computed variables that we use to mutate to create the log and the different scores whether each reading is buggier than average across the whole data set and then also buggier than average for that particular site. All right, so that looks great. So now we are ready to plot something. So what I want to show you now is how to plot, um, let's plot some bug levels. All right, so ggplot um, is a tidyverse package and so the grammar that you use um, to feed data into it is a lot like what we've been doing so far. So what we can do is take our data frame that's called plot features and we can pipe it into a ggplot. Now the ggplot here you can see that ggplot is expecting you to give it data. Now, we've already told it what the data is because we're piping the data in, so we don't need to worry about that. And then it's expecting a mapping, and this AES um, stands for aesthetics. Now, aesthetics are essentially what you want your plot to look like. That is, what should be on the x-axis and what should be on the y-axis. Um, and then the dot 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 is what kind of plot you want. Do you want it to be points? Do you want it to be bars? Do you want it to be a histogram or violins or something even fancier? Right? So we'll start by saying that we want the aesthetics. For this plot, I want to see what the variability in bug levels is like let's say across year. So I want to put on the x-axis, I want year. And on the y-axis, I want each box. Okay. Now, let's just make sure, we'll look at our data frame and make sure that I called those the right things. Yes, so the year and the beach box is what I want to be plotting. And then, once you've defined your aesthetics, what you want to be on the x-axis and y-axis, you add, and this is like adding a layer 
to your plot, you add with a plus sign what kind of plot you want. So in this case, I'm going to try and see what a geopoint plot looks like. All right, let's give that a go. So plot that. The nice thing about this is that the output of your plots appears over here in this plot um, tab. And every time you do a new plot, you can use these arrows to go back and forth to compare plots. Okay? So what you can see here is that um, it looks like 2013 is a particularly variable year. There is one reading, this is the most extreme reading in the data set that we remember being about 4,900. One reading that's really high. You can see most of the readings are actually less than 500. Now, what this is really useful to see the spread of the data in individual points. But what you'll notice is that there's no way that we can see all of the points on this graph. We know, actually we can work that out, how many points, how many observations are there per year. Let's put together a little summarize, which we know how to do now, to test it out, right? So if we go plot beaches, and we pipe that into a group by function. So we want it, in this case, we want to group by year. And then we pipe that into a summarize. And let's summarize the number of observations equals n, which is just the count of observations. Let's see what that gives us. Ah, right, okay. So here you can see that each year there's somewhere between 500 and 600 observations. This is, of course, across all the beach sites. So you can see that we're obviously not seeing 600 dots here. Um, what R is doing is plotting dots that contain the same value on top of each other. So there are ways to have to get around that. Um, and one of those is to change this geome point to a different type of um, geome. So another option, let me just, I'm going to, actually let's read notes for ourselves about what we're doing. So here we are summarizing how many observations per year and here we are re-plotting um, levels by year using jitter. Okay. So, good notes for ourselves. I'm going to copy this code down here, try this again. This time, instead of using geom point, I'm going to change this to geom jitter. And let's see what that looks like. Aha, uh -huh. that tells us a little bit more, right? So what geom jitter does is spread the points a little bit, adding a tiny bit of random noise so that um, they don't all appear totally on top of one another. One another. But what you can see here is that actually um, there are lots and lots of values that are around about zero. The other option that I like that comes from the um, GGB Swarm package is geom quasi-random. So let's see if that makes, in some cases, quasi-random looks better than, um, than jitter. 
Let's try and see whether that makes any difference. Hmm, actually, no. So because most of the values are really close to zero, quasi-random just looks a bit weird. So I think for this plot, I'm going to go back and say my fake is jitter. All right. 